welcome back once again to this channel as per to attend in this class we will learn the famous poem of jayanto mahapatra and you can see on the screen the name of the poem is hunger uh, just uh, before going into this main topic of the poem i have a one request to all of you just watch the entire video if you find this video quite beneficial to all of you then subscribe and share and please also share with your friends who are known to you just have a quick look into the poem the hunger uh, this poem was first published in 1976 and jayanto mahapatra was born in 1928 he wrote uh, many other poems too that are really fascinating namely indian summer if you go through this poem you can see that there is also such type of topic of hunger but here in this poem we will learn explanation as well as critical appreciation even uh, we will also probe we will also divulge out the various perspective that are related to this poem so friends uh, without wasting much more time let's begin it was hard to believe the flesh that was heavy on my back the fisherman said will you have her carelessly trailing his nets and his nerves as though his work sanctified the purpose with which he faced himself i saw his white bones thrash his eyes so this is the first stanza and uh, whenever you are reading this poem you so that uh, there is no kind of regular rhyme it is written in free verse so what does the poet here say it was hard to believe the flesh was heavy on my back so here flesh flesh is equal to carnal pleasure and uh, is dominating on the poet very much so that he wants to have such type of sexual pleasure and this idea is unbelievable this idea is not at all believable just look into the conflict the poet himself is in confusion whether he wants to hanker after flesh whether he wants to have carnal pleasure or sexual pleasure or physical relation with any another person and that uh, this is really unbelievable but still now within this conflict the emotion of the poem goes on from one flesh to another and uh, then the poet meets the fisherman fisherman is another character in this poem the fisherman said will you have her carelessly trailing his necks and his nerves just to look into the words carelessly suppose that if you are the father and you are just selling your girl to a sex slave so what will your feelings be you can't never be such type of careless and i hope that whenever you are going through such type of a job you will cry probably there are some kind of compulsion that the fisherman is working under such type of compulsion will you have her carelessly the fisherman asked the poet will you have her will you take uh, her as sex slave will you enjoy uh, your sexual pleasure with her carelessly and uh, the process of throwing such type of works was quite carelessly so much carelessly it also incites a doubt among the readers it incites uh, the readers that probably the fisherman is accustomed in a doing such type of thing maybe the fisherman has uh, asked so many occasion to other and uh, he collect some of the customers uh, for his daughter and whenever the fisherman is saying such type of works trailing his necks he is just collecting his necks and his nerves not only he collecting his necks rather he snooches his nerves here 
the collecting or thrilling of nerves means that he is also in anxiety and uh, just uh, you have uh, in your uh, surroundings have seen that those person who have some kind of history of whenever they swoons their nerves snooges their nerves uh, gathers their nerves uh, collects together similarly here the fisherman is going through such type of excruciating pain and he is not at all willing to sell his daughter as sex slave but he is in such a situation that he is bound to do such type of thing probably there are some kind of compulsion compulsion may be in respect of economy in respect of social tradition or many other political problems may be as though his work sanctified the purpose with which he faced himself and whenever he threw the words toward the poet of taking his daughter as slave and he felt that his purpose is sanctified he does not feel a certain kind of sin in himself rather he feels that his purpose is sanctified so imagine that in which situation can a heinous work be called a secret one surely a heinous work can be called sacred whenever there are some kind of tincture of any kind of compulsion here the purpose is sanctified it means that he has uh, been able to collect the customer for his daughter not only customer but he is also able to get some food or some money which the poet after doing sex with his daughter will provide so this is the implication of the sanctified the purpose i saw his white bone thrash his eyes and whenever the poet accepted the proposal then the poet saw into the eyes of the fisherman and what does he saw there he saw that the white bones thrash his eyes and here the line also carries many kind of implication uh, some ideas are that uh, probably the fisherman is in hunger he has not eaten any food for a long time so as a result uh, his eyeballs are sunk and the bones around the eyes are just becoming quite prominent probably uh, it may have also another implication that probably the fisherman was trying to conceal his tears dropping from his eyes so therefore the white bones thrash his eyes that means that the white bones are preventing the working of his eyes the process of tearing i it. followed him across the sprawling sands my mind thumping in the flesh sling hope lay perhaps in burning the house i lived in silence gripped my sleeps his body clawed at the froth his old necks had only dried up from the seas so whenever the poet is accepting the proposal so what can he do he surely will follow the fisherman to reach to his destination where he will have sex with this girl so therefore the beginning line of the second stanza is that i followed him across the sprawling sand sprawling means spread expansion so the poet followed uh, the fisherman whenever the poet is following the fisherman uh, he is also crossing the sands uh, which are spread that means that the poet is following the fisherman for a long time to reach his own destination and uh, here uh, we need to look into the autobiographical aspect of jayanta mahapatra jayanta mahapatra was born in the coastal area of orissa and mostly 
He deals with the suffering of the people living in the coastal areas. So therefore the sprawling sand is the indication of the coastal area uh, through which the poet himself and the fisherman is going through. The intention of both the persons are different. Uh, one, the poet is going to fulfill his hunger, hunger in the sense of carnal pleasure. And at the same time, the fisherman is also going to fulfill his own hunger. Hunger in the sense that he will get some money from the poet. And with that money, uh, he will buy some of the food for the girl and for himself. My mind is thumping in the flesh sling. And whenever I am just following, I felt thumping in the flesh sling. Sling is a support. Suppose that uh, a person uh, breaks his hand and after doing plaster on his hand, uh, most often doctors put uh, some of the white uh, uh, sling to support his hand along with the neck. So it is a certain kind of support. My mind is thumping in the flesh sling. The poet is pursuing and he is also feeling that uh, he will go there and uh, fulfill his own hunger. And therefore, his flesh is supporting him to do so. Hope lay perhaps in burning the house I lived in. And whenever he is going uh, through, he also expected that probably he will burn the house he lived in. It means that in our Indian tradition, it is said that a uh, male figure will have sex only his legitimate wife and if he does any kind of illicit lascivious uh, sex pleasure then it will be considered as illegal and uh, this will surely destroy the peace of a house here house means the location where the poet lives of course, this house also another indication in this line. As the poet is going uh, to have sex with the daughter of the fisherman, so what he will do? He will surely destroy the peace of the women as well as the peace in the heart or in the house where the girl is living, where the daughter is living. Silence gripped my sleeves and uh, then silence gripped my sleeves. The poet feels a certain kind of inertia, as if someone is calling back, as if someone is forcing him to back. And uh, this someone is none but silence. So silence is forcing the speaker, the poet, not to proceed any further in this heinous crime. His body clawed at the froth his old necks had dragged up from the seas. Then the poet sees that the fisherman had just collected the net and within the net there is nothing but vacuity. There is no kind of fishes, only vacuity, only emptiness. And the fisherman has collected his all the net to go towards the Home. In the flickering dark, his heart opened like a wound. The wind was I, and the days and the nights before. Palms, fronts crashed my skin. Inside the sack, an oil lamp played the hours bounds to those walls. Over and over, the sticky shoots crossed the space of my mind. Whenever the poet along with the fisherman reach to the heart of the fisherman because there the poet is going to have carnal pleasure, going to satisfy his own physical hunger. There the poet experiences that in the flickering dark his heart opened like a wound. There the poet saw that the heart is in deplorable condition 
and uh, there are some of the flickering light those light which are dim so as a result the deplorable condition of the heart and uh, the dim light coming out from the heart makes the entire atmosphere quite eerie as if the house is himself in wound. Similarly, those people who are living in the house, they are also in wound. They are in mental torture. They are all feeling a physical suffocation, etc. The wind was I, and uh, in this heart, which is full of wound, which does not have capability of taking much more pressure, then the poet goes there. That means that he is also going to burden the mentality of the entire inhabitant of the heart. So therefore, the wind was I. And just look into the imagery that Mohapatra here has used. Uh, suppose that a heart which is in deplorable condition, if there appears any kind of storm, what happens there? Surely uh, some of the uh, part of the house will be destroyed or maybe there is a possibility that uh, the entire house will be crashed back into the mud. So here the poet was comparing himself as wind and he is also going to enter the house and the days and the nights before just look into the words i have already mentioned to you whenever i am saying or explaining the word careless so here days and night before that means that numerous time before so it is quite possible that not only the poet but also many other customers have gone through the house and they all satisfied their carnal pleasure, their sexual pleasure. So it is quite clear that the daughter of the fisherman is the only means of earning some of the sustenance of the fisherman family. So therefore the father, the fisherman, uh, goes uh, into the sea and from there collects some of the customer so that uh, the customer can give some money after enjoying sex with his daughter. Palm fronts scratched my skin. Here the heart is built with the palm fronts or palm leaves and uh, those leaves are scratching into the skin of the poet. The poet could have said that the palm fronts are forbidding him or forbidding his entire body, but uh, the poet does not say so. Here, skin is equal to the body, but uh, the poet is again saying the skin because uh, in almost all the lines there is indication of flesh or carnal pleasure. Here, the poet uh, with some of the hints are also saying that the entire atmosphere is not at all enjoyable. Here the palm fronts are forbidding him. Probably the palm fronts had scratched his skin as a mark, as a symbol that he has committed such type of crime. Inside the sack, an oil lamp played the hours, bounced to those walls. And uh, inside this heart, inside the sack, there is the oil lamp, and uh, whose uh, lights are flickering. And uh, those flickering lights are bound to those four walls. If, uh, it is said that his house is not in good condition, but uh, it has four walls so that uh, no one can have a vigil what is going inside the heart. Whenever the daughter is uh, uh, doing sex with any kind of customer, it uh, should have privacy, it should have secrecy. 
so therefore the entire walls are thatched with palm leaves no one can uh, see what is going inside the heart so here the implication is that the oil lamps lights the flickering lights are not uh, coming out from the walls rather they are bound within the walls and uh, this also is the indication of the fact that their hunger their story of hunger is unknown to others but those customers who enter into the house they would probably watch the hunger that uh, they were going through over and over the sticky shoots crossed the space of my mind soot soot is nothing but a certain kind of black smoke uh, if you go into the kitchen and uh, if your kitchen is uh, built with uh, straw roof uh, you probably have seen some type of black uh, uh, cotton type element in the roof and uh, this is called a soot uh, those people living in the village probably they have seen in their kitchen such type of soot so the poet has entered and he is going to his own desired place that is to the daughter of the fisherman but uh, what is hindering him that the soot the sticky soot whenever the poet is uh, trying to cross the few yards in the heart to reach to his own destination it uh, had some kind of hindrance in the form of a suit so the poet is saying that uh, crossed the pace of my mind the poet's mentality the poet's uh, uh, oscillation or dwindlingness is also quite evident the poet is in conflict whether he will go to enjoy or to satiate his own carnal pleasure or not the entire atmospheric elements are forbidding him to do such type of crime now the last stanza of this poem i heard him say my daughter she just turned 15 and just look into the three dot probably the father is giving much more information about his daughter so that the poet feel convinced in doing the heinous crime that is to have sexual pleasure with the fisherman's daughter so the fisherman had uh, said to the poet convincingly that uh, his daughter had just turned 15 so 15 is not uh, at all a age of enjoying carnal pleasure Across the globe, we all know that 15 is not the age of maturity. And even in this age, no girl should be given married. But here the line means that 15, probably the fisherman is uh, trying to strike the attention of the girl that uh, he is uh, just turned 15 and uh, he has overcome he has come out from his puberty and uh, now quite uh, relishable in respect of sex, in respect of carnal pleasure. Feel her, the simple line, after speaking many of the words which are not said here, but the three dot in the line, in the first line, shows us that probably the fisherman had said many things about his daughter. And finally, feel her. The fisherman says that go and enjoy whatever you want to do, how much, in what way you want to do, just go and enjoy. But at the same time, the fisherman is also saying, I will be back soon. Your bus leaves at nine. The fisherman is reminding him that go and enjoy, but uh, remember that. Uh, I also come back here probably the fisherman will come back for what for money 
or maybe for any kind of help that the fisherman is seeking from the poet so therefore after uh, enjoying after satisfying his own carnal pleasure the poet the poet should have to pay and for the collection of this payment the fisherman will come back soon and your boss leaves at nine and uh, the fisherman is also restricting him that go you can enjoy but uh, you must have to come out before nine because it is the time you need to go to your own house leaving this house or leaving this uh, uh, emotion of carnal pleasure the sky fell on me and uh, a father's exhausted oil whenever the fisherman just said everything and uh, was about to go out then the poet failed in himself as if that a thunderstorm has struck his head because the speaker or the poet has felt that he is just going to commit a heinous crime and the crime is with a 15 years old daughter with a 15 years old girl who probably has not seen any kind of uh, love any kind of life it does not have any kind of scene of what life is but the poet is going to have sex with this 15 years old daughter and a father's exhausted oil this is the very implication of the condition of the fisherman's economy and his social status probably the fisherman has no any alternative idea of gathering sustenance long and lean his ears were cold as rubber and, and whenever the poet goes close to this 15 year daughter what he sees there he sees that uh, that a girl is very long so the girl is uh, tall but lean and very much thin as, as if probably she is in malnutrition for many days and her ears were cold as rubber and the ear means the daughter's experiences the daughter's emotions as if they were cold as rubber as if there had not any kind of feelings any kind of lively feelings as if the girl had become a machine to satisfy the sexual pleasure of many other customers she had no kind of uh, emotion no kind of liking whenever the fisherman is collecting the customer probably uh, he does not take any kind of consent of the daughter so that's why he has become just like a mechanical she is just exposing himself uh, and do whatever the customer want to do she does not have any kind of feeling to say she is just like a machine she opened her wormy legs wide here uh, wormy legs it has also diverse meaning uh, if you look any kind of worm or insect probably you have seen that their legs are long and uh, they are quite slim here the 15 years daughter's legs are wormy legs because they are very much thin and she has just spread her legs wide to show the genital to show the sexual part so that the poet can satisfy his own hunger that means that the fisherman's daughter is now naked and uh, she is just uh, showing his sexual part or or, or 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 genitals to the uh, poet uh, so that uh, he feels a certain kind of excitement to um, feel his own carnal pleasure to sex with this little girl i felt the hunger there the other one and uh, whenever the poet saw the sexual part of the little girl he felt that there is probably a hunger not only the physical hunger or the sexual hunger 
it is another kind of hunger which leads people to do any kind of heinous crime it is the lack of food it is the lack of money it is the lack of property it is the lack of living a life with common amenities so such type of hunger are still persisting in the heart of the fisherman the fish slithering turning aside and here is the implication here fish is indication of a food that is inside the belly of the little girl and little girl is belching as if she is in hunger and this hunger is also said in this line so thank you once again for watching this video